hey, we're in the home stretch, and that means the playoff picture is taking form. The Dolphins have put themselves in great position, but I need you to like this video if you want to guarantee they're going to be in the playoffs, and don't you be the one to jinx it. Like this video, and let's dive into the latest Dolphins injury report, and of course, the AFC playoff picture on this edition of Dolphins Today. <laughs> Welcome into this edition of Dolphins today. Hey, I'm still fired up about that 30 to nothing waxing of the New York Jets this season. We, but you know what? We turn the page and we continue to move on. Yes, the Dolphins are 10 and 4 for the first time since 2000, but we're not celebrating any victories any more longer this week. It's time to get into complete focus playoff mode and of course, the latest injury update. And that's what you can count on for today's show. And we'll round it out with the remaining schedule. So injury update, playoff picture, and of course the remaining schedule. So let's do it. Buckle it up. Dial it in. And we start with this report from Barry Jackson, one of the Dolphins insiders, talking about Chris Brooks. Now, just in case I need to refresh your memory, Chris Brooks was the undrafted free agent running back out of BYU that really burst onto the scene and made the most of his limited opportunities early on in the season. There's a couple of runs he had, albeit in mop-up time against the Denver Broncos, that really stick out in my head. But he's an active running back that runs angry. He was shedding tacklers the entire way. And a very elusive running back as well provides one more dangerous element to the Dolphins offense. And I know it was a long time ago, but he's been working through that injury. He suffered in week three and is getting ready to come back off of IR. And according to Barry Jackson, we should expect it in the next couple of days. And what's also important to know, we've talked about this several different times, but to refresh your memory, the NFL allots for eight activations off injured reserve. The Dolphins have used six of those eight activations, and Chris Brooks would be the seventh. That means only one remaining after that, which Mike McDaniel said would likely be for either Jerome Baker or Isaiah Wynn, but McDaniel declined to rule him out for the year. So a lot still unfolding with that, but let's take a look at the Dolphins' running back depth chart for if and when Chris Brooks comes off of IR. Obviously, the one and only Heem Raheem Mostert is our RB1, and Devon Achan basically is RB1A. I don't like using RB2 because both of them offer such a dynamic element in the backfield. We saw a little bit of Jeff Wilson Jr. against the Jets. Devon Ahmed likely gone for the year. He remains on IR with that foot injury. We have seen Darrington Evans in one game this year off of the practice squad. That was that Black Friday game against the New York Jets. But I believe it will be Chris Brooks who will come off of IR along with what Barry Jackson is reporting. And so if and when he does come off IR, we have a decision to make for that RB3 position. And I ask you, do you want it to be Jeff Wilson, who we've seen a little bit, or Chris Brooks? Both of them offer an element at that RB3 position, but in different ways. I think Chris Brooks a little bit more physical of a runner. Jeff Wilson is a veteran that has proven he can get it done in this league. He can also be involved in the passing game. So I ask you, let me know in the comments. Simply type CB for Chris Brooks or JW for Jeff Wilson. And I know what you're going to say. This is a cop-out answer. Read my pick one or the other. I really am confident in both. I kid you not. And I also think that speaks to the productivity from the running back room as a whole already. When you talk about what Raheem Mostert's been able to do, franchise record, 18 rushing touchdowns, 20 total touchdowns, in that is number one in the National Football League. And then, of course, with Devon A. Chan also at that running back position. So I have confidence in whoever the Dolphins decide to go with at RB3. But the veteran experience from Jeff Wilson is tough to pass on. Now, continuing on with more injury news from Barry Jackson, Emmanuel Agba and Cam Smith both suffered soft tissue injuries in that game against the New York Jets and are both day to day. McDaniel expressed optimism on both ends, which is really good news. And both of them have a role on this team, albeit Cam Smith's role, not exactly what we expected from a second round pick out of South Carolina. But as for Emmanuel Agba, he's seen his time increase with the injury to Jalen Phillips. And both of them have a role on this team. 
and especially Emmanuel Agba helped contribute, albeit he wasn't the one making all the plays, but he was on the field, and that performance put forth by the Dolphins' defense was incredible against it. I know it was the lowly Jets, but look at those numbers. Four turnovers, fours, really impressive there. Two interceptions, two forced fumbles, and the four yards. That's not a misprint, folks. Four yards of total offense in the first half, 103 for the game, and they just did it constantly with Pressure on the quarterback, six sacks, 14 quarterback hits, limiting the Jets to just 80 pass yards. Really impressive stuff. So Agba is an impactful player for this Dolphins defense. You hope that it's nothing long term, but we'll keep you updated on that. Now, coming up, we do have some more injury news to get to, as well as a playoff picture and some fun with a little simulation, if you will. We're going to get our playoff simulator out and talk about some of the Dolphins' percentages. But before we go any further, I got to tell you about a whale of a deal, folks. I'm not even kidding. I've been telling you about PricePix.com for months. PricePix.com slash CLNS is where you can get that $100 deposit match. PricePix.com slash CLNS, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because they've got exceptional promotions for the 12 days of pick. And that's a new promo each day leading up to Christmas. And you guys, this one on Monday Night Football is like stealing. I'm giving you free money. You're going to get $5 for every field goal in the Monday Night Football game between Philadelphia and Seattle. So don't wait. If you got to pause the video, that's fine. Go to pricepix.com slash CLNS for that $100 deposit match. Start an account and start playing the 12 days of Pixmas. And we love you and we care about you, so we'll put that link right in the comments of today's video. But it's prizepix.com slash CLNS. And get in on the 12 days of Pixmas, including Monday Night Football's amazing deal at prizepix.com slash CLNS. A couple more injury updates to get to. And I don't even know if you call this an injury, but more of a display of incredible toughness, incredible grit. And that is what Andrew Van Ginkle did in that game against the Jets. Check this out from Adam Schefter. Dolphins linebacker Andrew Van Ginkle broke his nose in the first quarter of Sunday's win over the Jets and played with the broken nose the rest of the game did not miss any time. That's insane. The guy represents what toughness, what grit is all about. And there's nobody else you want playing for the Aqua Orange than guys like Andrew Van Ginkle. And this is just the most football guy response ever. Asked about the incident, here's what Van Ginkle had to say. I took a fist to the face. Went through my face mask. Blood started gushing everywhere. Sorry if you got a weak stomach. I got back to the sidelines. Blood was pouring out of both nostrils. And you know what they did? They basically stopped the bleeding. And then he just continued to play the rest of the game. That's a football guy. And we love AGV for that. So show some love. Type AVG in the comments. Do it right now. Because that's the guy putting his body on the line for the Miami Dolphins. And because of that, because of efforts like that, the Dolphins have found themselves in the driver's seat in the AFC. Check out the latest AFC playoff picture with Miami at 10-4. and four. Obviously, Baltimore won on Sunday Night Football against the Jags, so they hold that number one spot, 11-3 and three on the season. Miami still chasing them. Remember, they're going to play the Ravens down the stretch in Baltimore. That wild card picture shaping up in Interesting in the AFC South, both the Colts and Jags at 8-6. and six. Are you kidding me? Who expected that? Certainly not me. A big win for the Colts over the Steelers this past weekend as well. But the way it's shaping up with Miami's remaining opponents, obviously some really tough games depending on who you ask. Some might even tell you Miami has the toughest remaining schedule. Now Dallas and Buffalo, those games are at home. You got to go to Baltimore in week number 17 of the National Football League, week 16 at home against the Cowboys on Christmas Eve. Of course, we're getting you ready for that with previews coming up this week, live shows, that sort of thing, as well as that road game against the Baltimore Ravens. That's going to be a tough one. And then at home with perhaps a lot on the line against the Buffalo Bills, a revenge game 
for the aqua and orange. So I had a little fun today. I'm not going to lie. You can do it too at the New York Times. Awesome little playoff stimulator here. So these are all based on hundreds and hundreds of thousands of playoff simulations. Again, done by the New York Times that place different records for different possible outcomes. Let's start with the best case scenario. 3-0, 100% chance to make the playoffs, 99% chance for a first round bye because of course 3-0 would mean you beat the Baltimore Ravens. Now, 2-1 with a loss to the Ravens, you still have a great chance to make the playoffs, but that chance to make the first round bye is at 1%. Obviously, Baltimore would likely be the team that gets the first round bye. Now, 2-1, not the best case scenario, and unfortunately a loss to the Bills. You might think, oh no, we're not going to make the playoffs. Fear not, you go 2-1, a 100% chance to make the playoffs, but that first round by then 30% chance because some strange things could happen with the Ravens, who the Dolphins are chasing. Now, last but certainly not least, worst case scenario, it's not going to happen, don't even worry about this one, but the Dolphins go 0-3, still a 90% chance to make the playoffs, but 89% chance that first game would be an away game. So lots more different, lots more different. There are other types of simulations that could happen and other types of scenarios. Of course, we don't have time to go through all the hundreds and hundreds of thousand possible scenarios, but those are a couple for you. So in essence, you got three games, three really tough games, and I believe Miami can win every single one of them. If they go two and one, I still like the Dolphins' chances quite a bit. But Regardless, we're going to be with you every step of the way, and that's why you subscribe to the channel, so make sure you haven't. And if you made it to the end, you got to like this video, because like I said at the beginning of this video, you don't want to be the one that jinx it. Miami, 10-4, and four, best start to a season in a 14-game 14 14 game sample size since 2000. Things are going very well for the Aqua and Orange. Don't be the one to ruin it like this video. That's going to wrap it up for me. Shout out to producer Jack on the ones and twos, the one and only Jack Lauderay, helping us bring you all the Dolphins content possible. And we will see you next time on Dolphins Today.